Thank you. Thank you, Co-Chair Smith, uh, Co-Chair McGovern, and honorable members of the Commission. Thank you for inviting the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, or USERF, to testify at this important hearing about the Chinese government's ongoing persecution of Christians and other religious minorities. USERF is an independent, bipartisan U.S. federal government body that is dedicated to promoting the universal right to freedom of religion or belief around the world. USERF is led by nine commissioners who are appointed by the White House and the leadership of both chambers of Congress from both parties, supported about, by about 20 nonpartisan professional staff. USERF seeks, to define, uh, USERF seeks to defend religious freedom around the world for people of all faiths and those who hold no faith at all. Throughout the year, we monitor religious freedom conditions abroad and make policy recommendations to the President, Secretary of State, and Congress. As a Uyghur American, I have experienced firsthand the tyranny of the Chinese Communist Party. I was born in a re-education camp during the height of China's Cultural Revolution. In 1995, I was fortunate to be afforded the opportunity to attend graduate school in the United States. I received political asylum and have since been proud to call myself an American citizen. I co-founded the Uyghur Human Rights Project and have served as president of the Uyghur American Association. As you know, USERF works closely with the Tom Lentos Human Rights Commission on a variety of issues. Several years ago, we sponsored Bishop James Schutzman for inclusion and defending freedoms project. USERF is deeply saddened by the recent reports that Bishop Xu may have died during his unjust imprisonment. We, we urge the Vatican to make determining his fate a priority during any ongoing negotiation with the Chinese government and to refuse to recognize any replacement bishop uh, for Baoding City in Hubei, uh, Hubei province. The news about Bishop Xu comes during the worst persecution of religious groups in China in decades and illustrative of a larger trends. I will give an overview of, overview of religious freedom in China, then we'll share a greater detail about how this affecting Christians in this country. The revised regulation on religious affairs, which went into effect on February 1, 2018, require religious groups to seek approval from local authorities before holding religious activities in school or publishing religious material online. It also transfers control over management of religious affairs to the United Front Work Department, which is an organ of the Chinese Communist Party. This past February, new regulation on religious group went into effect, and this regulation allows local authorities to review the charter and annual work plans of religious organization and to monitor the comp their compliance with the national and local laws. Religious groups must also provide interpretation of religious doctrine and canon that comply with quote unquote socialist values. In addition to these regulations, Chinese authorities have used criminal and national security laws to target religious believers of all faiths. The government has detained millions of Uyghurs and other Muslims in concentration camps under the guise of combating against three forces, extremism, separatism, and terrorism. And yet, leaked government documents show that many detainees were targeted because of their religious practices, such as growing a beard, wearing headscarf or wheel. Significantly, the Chinese government has used these camps as a source of forced labor. In other words, they brought back the slavery. Early this year, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute estimated that 80,000 Uyghurs have been sent to work in textile, electronics, and other factories across China. The Chinese government has also intensified its ruthless campaign of forced assimilation against Tibetan Buddhists. Local authorities have increased restriction on Tibetan Buddhist monasteries and appointed Communist Party cadres to the, to the management board. During the past few years, the, the government has destroyed significant parts of the famous Larungar and Yachingar Tibetan Buddhist complexes in Sichuan province and expelled thousands of monks and nuns. These acts irreparably 
damage the cultural heritage of the Tibetan people. This Sinification campaign also violently targets Chinese, Chinese Christians. Most of China's estimated 70 million Protestants refuse to join the state-run Three Self-Patriotic Movement. Chinese governments have raided and demolished countless of underground house churches, most recently Xinguang Church in Xiamen City in Fujian province. Even when authorities do not destroy churches, they have removed hundreds of crosses and replaced images of Jesus Christ or Virgin Mary with the picture of the General Secretary Xi Jinping. As we learned during our hearing last week on Chinese surveillance of religious minorities, government agents have installed cameras in the pulpits of churches so that they can monitor who attends services. Last year, there were even reports that some Chinese localities, including Guangzhou City, offered to pay cash rewards to individuals who reported on underground church activity. Yusuf is particularly concerned by the lack of transparency around the Vatican's provisional agreement with the Chinese government. The Vatican agreed to end the excommunication of seven bishops in return for veto over future appointments of bishops by the Chinese government. The state-affiliated Chinese Catholic Patriotic Association, or CCPA, has recognized five underground bishops. Most, uh, most recently, P Bishop Paul Ma Sungo of uh, Shoujo Diocese. However, the authorities continue to target and imprison others, including Guo Shijin uh, Suite, who refused to join the CCPA. The provisional agreement is set to expire in September. Although the Chinese government has not banned any of these religion, religions, Article 300 of the Chinese Criminal Code makes belongs, belonging to the Falun Gong movement a crime punishable with three to seven years imprisonment or more. Chinese authorities continue to harass and detain Falun Gong members simply for distributing literature about the group's practices. Because of the Chinese government's long history of systematic ongoing and egregious violation of religious freedom, USERF has recommended the State Department to designate China as a country of particular concern, or CPC, under the International Religious Freedom Act, of, Act every year since 1999. Although the State Department has designated China as a CPC since then, the US government currently fulfilled its requirement under URFA by counting sanctions it had already enacted against China for other purposes. USERF recommends ending these practices of double ha uh, heading because it sends mixed signals about our commitment to promoting religious freedom in China. In closing, I would like to thank Congress and this commission in particular for your consistent and vigorous efforts on behalf of religious freedom in China. Thank you very much for the opportunity and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Commissioner Turkel. Thank you.